Yeah, this is the hangar down here. Built it a few years ago. It hasn't been had the airplane in it for a while. Oh, it kind of got a lot of other little jobs going on in there that we've done and everything gets piled up in there so it's kind of a mess. It's going to take a little bit to get it opened up enough and straightened up enough that I can make a paint booth in here. So since the weather is warmed up now, it's up to oh, 50 degrees, 60 degrees. It's cooled off here now because it's uh, got a little period of rain for the next week or so and it's cooled off from what it was but it's still a lot better than 20 degrees or so. You don't have to heat that hanger up. I've got an old, uh, that's a billboard tarp we got off a company that sells those used that I had covered up the front of that with. It's kind of got beat up over the last few years and bought two of them when, uh, for that when I bought them and my wife sold one of them to somebody else so I don't have anything to replace it with right now. Anyway, I'm going to get in the hangar there and get that straightened up so we can get the paint booth made in there. Well, here's the inside of the hangar. It uh, might look like a mess to you. It looks like a mess to me, but it's a lot better than it was. I spent a couple hours uh, cleaning some of the junk out of it. Couldn't hardly walk through here, but after three years without or two years without an airplane in it and doing a bunch of other projects uh, in here everything just gets piled up and I've got a lot of junk to pile up. I had a good start of getting it straightened out but a friend of mine brought some wood up from down south that he's using in a cabin he's building up here and he wanted it planed so I dug the planer out and planed up his boards for him. He had some rough sawn dug fur that he's using for stringers or for uh, uprights for the set of stairs that he's making. We got those planed down and then he had, well there's a big piece there about uh, six foot long and it's about, looks like it, about 24, 25 inches wide at the widest of uh, red cedar. But that thing's about two and a half inches thick. Well, rather than plane it down, I went up and dug in my pile of uh, stuff that I've milled up and I found some nice red cedar boards uh, eight inches wide or so and planed those down for him and I've got plenty of them. He wouldn't have had enough in this board to make the number of treads that he wanted on his stairs so I went and got some out of my pile and, and planed those up and so he's got some real nice boards now for making his stairs. Well, now I got to get that cleaned up, get the planer put away, and I've got to get the radial arm saw out so that I can make up boards for framework for making a paint booth. Oh, I'm thinking I probably should make a rack someplace to hold those wings. I took those wings and I've just got them suspended from the ceiling right now. And I think maybe I should get those out of here to give me some, give me more room in here for a paint booth. Anyway, this is my hangar. See the far side over there? That kind of shows the construction. It's uh, two by six uh, spruce, and those spruce came right off the sawmill, and I built a frame wall, the walls for it, and I just framed them in. And I made uh, what I have: one wall on that side, and two walls on this side. That one there is uh, 14 feet long, and that was 12 feet tall. The front of the building is 15 feet tall overall, and then the back of the hangar is 10 feet tall. I sheeted it after I built it the next year, but it's sheeted with 1 by 12 spruce. Again, they came right off the sawmill, and you can see the gaps in there, light coming through there. You can stick your finger in there between them now. When that was put up green, you couldn't stick a dollar bill between those boards. That's uh, how much shrinkage there are on them. A workbench over on that side, of course you can't see it because it's all full of crap right now. And then there's some shelves over there. And the shelves overhead are above the height of what the wings are when they're on the airplane. So they clear that. And then this uh, building over here in the back corner, the hangar was built around it. That's an old shed that we got from the Parks and Rec. They were going to burn it down, call it the soccer shed, because that's what it was. It was a building that was up at the ball field that they used for a storage shed for the soccer club. Uh, it's like Little League Baseball or Pee Wee League Baseball. I guess they have a soccer league too, and that was their storage shed for their soccer stuff. Got two trusses that I made, the beams. Uh, there's one there in the middle and one up here in the front. And those are the main beams supporting the clear area in the hangar. And they're uh, two by sixes top and bottom with two by four cross pieces that go across. 
and then verticals that go up and down sheeted with half inch plywood and the plywood was glued on one side with structure adhesive and on the other side it was glued on with resource and all glue. Oh, those uh, are 40 feet long and the walls uh, are 39 feet apart so there's six inches of truss sticking out on each side so there's 38 feet wide on the inside which gives me about a foot and a half clearance on each side of the wing and then I put a four foot gusset on there which reduces the span of those trusses. They'll free span this building on uh, the summertime like now they free span the building but because of the snow load we get here I put posts in uh, and they're 12 feet and then with those gussets on them there that uh, reduces it down even more so uh, the span is not that wide on any point there about 12 feet and I leave those ones in that middle span all the time they can come out if I need to but I don't need to so I leave them in all the time and then here on the front uh, those posts uh, can come out for taking the airplane in and out rear wall was made into two pieces I forget what well this one is about eight feet and the other one is uh, I don't know what that one is 14 or 16 feet I can't remember and that wall is 10 feet high that would be the east wall there and that's two walls each one of those are 14 feet and of course I got all kinds of shelves and stuff in here the ceiling up there was two by eight spruce again that just come right off the sawmill now this back truss is supported uh, by this back wall over here on that side but the front truss uh, didn't have anything to support it out farther so I've got cables with turnbuckles on them to hold that tight to pull that tight to hold that front truss from bowing out forward and the two by fours keep it from bowing in and the cables keep it from bowing out it's only a four foot drop in 28 feet well it's not enough for this roof to slide off or to give it any strength uh, enough strength for the amount of snow load we get so we have to shovel this roof off in the winter time the winter that I built this I believe we got over 200 inches of snow and then the next winter was the same way we haven't had snow like that since but we have had to shovel this roof off a few times right there dead center in the hangar I spliced three two by eights together to use for a beam and I hook my chain hoist up on that to uh, pick the airplane up or pick engine up the engine up off the airplane and I've used it for other things too but this is primarily for the airplane and I've got all the miscellaneous parts that came off of the old airframe up there there's the old control surfaces the horizontal stabilizers and elevators to covers for the fuel tanks are up there the cowling more parts uh, over this way that came out of there the floorboards and things like that up on top of the wings are the uh, lift struts and the boot cowl I have three doors that we made and they're hung on uh, gate hinges which are just basically uh, long straps with a barrel on each end of them or on one end of them one of them has an open barrel on it the other one has a pin welded into the barrel and it fits into it so they swing on those and I have what five or six gate hinges on each door so we've got this door over here swings open and then I've got the middle door I've got it open right now and I've got the right hand door and it's closed and those doors were made out of two by fours that we salvaged and the plywood is not four by eight sheets it's three eighths and it was cut to like three feet six inches by seven feet or something like that again that door there on the right side is hinged with gate hinges there that'll swing open this middle one is gate hinges that are bolted into this right hand door it swings on it and then i can pick it up with the excavator when we open both doors up or all the doors up i'll just pick that center door up and take it off and and put it out of the way so i'm going to make a rack to put those wings on to get them out of here and I haven't decided exactly wh how, what it's going to be yet I've kind of got an idea and uh, it's kind of firming that idea up but I bought a bunch of old two by fours that uh, were scrap that I had out I drug them down here and I'm going to cut uh, six of them off well, I think I wound up counting those five feet long anyway make kind of a frame a couple of uprights and then uh, arms stick out either side with a, a shorter upright on each side so there's going to be two equal sides to this and then hang some carpet in there to to lay those wings in got my first end stand built 
I'm going to build another one just like that. It took a little bit to, the, to get to dimensions. I measured the wings and they're not quite a foot through the camber of the wing. So I figured at first that two feet would be enough or a foot and a half would be enough for the saddle on that. So I made my first uh, bottom stringers at uh, four feet, which would have made it a foot and a half. But after I put the uh, posts on and the center post in and laid it all out with those, I could see that wasn't going to be enough. I want enough so that the, it fits in a saddle and tips in real good towards the center on both uh, wings, be one on each end of the side of that. Oh, I want it to tip in and not out so it doesn't fall out of there. So I changed it, made six foot stringers there on the bottom. I've got two foot posts on each end and a five foot post in the middle. I've got them uh, bolted together with uh, five inch uh, bolts. I've got regular uh, hex bolts on them with nuts and fender washers on both sides so they don't pull in. That one looks like it'll work pretty good. There's enough distance in there. I'm going to use carpet for a, a saddle in there which will be attached here on the outside post and then on the center post with a sag in it so that the uh, wings will, will saddle right in there and fit right in there. So I'm going to make another end fixture there and then we'll run stringers between the two of them. I think I'm going to run about eight foot apart. I'm not entirely sure there but I think eight foot would be a good distance on that. I've got those two end panels bolted up and then I took some other two by fours, cut them to eight foot lengths and I've got three of them for stringers across the bottom there for spreaders and then I've got one each on each one of those uprights. They'll also be spreaders and they'll be what the saddle hangs on. This thing's not going to be a permanent installation or anything and it's uh, only going to be used once maybe might be used again later, I don't know. Anyway, I don't need to get too involved in it. I also want to figure out how to mount some wheels to it so I can roll it in and out of here as I need to or roll it around as I need to. I'm going to screw those 2x4s down, the stretchers, the longer ones, with some porch and deck screws. There's the wing rack naked. Turned out a lot sturdier than I expected it to. I don't have any diagonals or anything in there to uh, stiffen it up, but uh, it seems like it's pretty good so far. Oh, I've got the stretchers out wide. Uh, those are six foot and those are bolted into the uprights with quarter inch bolts and nuts. Then I put the stretchers, well, I think I put two or maybe three, three inch number eight screws in each one of them. I put them in from the bottom because once I got to thinking about it, I thought I'd put the wheels on there and I've got those little Little wheels are like uh, cartwheels or something. Uh, they're not going to be steerable, but they'll roll around. Anyway, I had some three inch angle iron and I cut off four inch lengths of the three inch angle iron and then uh, drilled them out for quarter inch bolts through the two by four and then a five eighths inch bolt for an axle for those wheels. And I bolted them up to those lower stringers uh, so the weight is pushing up on it and, and it pushes it into those uh, cross pieces and everything instead of pushing them away. So it winds up being a lot more sturdy than I expected it to be. Now I'll take that old carpet that I've got and I'm going to cut, cut a strip or two off of it. I don't know uh, whether I'm going to put two strips on there or, or one strip but anyway I'll tack that into these uh, stringers on these short sides and drape them up over the the tall ones and then back down onto the short ones here, tack them into that, and that'll work for a saddle for holding those uh, wings in. I took a measuring tape and hooked in over here on the short posts on the short side and run up over the top and down and then over to the other short side and left a pretty good sag in the middle there for the wing to saddle into and determined that I needed around 14 feet of carpet to stretch out between the one side and the other on the short side and up over the top. I laid my carpet out and took some measurements on it and I don't have anywhere near 14 feet. I think I've got 12 feet, 11 feet or something like that one way and less than that the other way. So I have to change the plan a little bit and I'll cut some say three foot, four foot wide strips, seven feet and nail in there and I'll just nail them into the short, the stretcher there on the short side and then up over onto the stretcher on the tall side in the center and then go from both sides and make it two pieces both ways and I don't need to go the full length I was thinking about going the full length of that with the carpet if I had it long enough 
but I don't need to go the full length. If I make two pieces about, well, a thing is uh, eight feet long, so if I make two pieces about two and a half feet wide, that should span enough distance to uh, support the leading edge of the wing without buckling at any place. Anyway, I'll get some roofing nails and nail those into those stretchers. I got it all put together that I couldn't uh, get a, the carpet to fit all the way over it for one nice big saddle all over the whole thing, but I cut out pieces and fit them in there. I laid that carpet out here on the floor and measured it out, squared it up, cut off seven feet, and then cut off three foot chunks and nailed them up on there. And I got two th or three three foot chunks out of the one side of it. Didn't think I was going to get another three foot chunk out of it. I couldn't get it out of that side, but the runner that was left, I got another chunk that was three foot long, so or three foot wide. So we got that nailed up there with a bunch of roofing nails. That's going to hold pretty good, pretty nice. Okay, we got a little good help out here today and got those wings down and they fit right on there just like that was made for it. So, looks like it's going to work okay. Cheap, cheap tires are flat, but I uh, didn't expect anything else out of them. They roll anyway. 